Hey, it's Guilherme. Today we're gonna see how you can work with pixel art games using Godot, covering not only the visual aspect of it, but also the mechanics. Here is a demo that we created to showcase some of the differences when working with pixel art games. By playing the game, you can see that our window here is really small, and that is because we are working with a really small resolution, because again, we are working with a pixel art game. This way, we don't have to upscale anything, either the sprites themselves or the scale of our game objects. To make it easier to see, I'm going to increase the size of my window. And we have a simple character that goes from left to right, and we can also jump. And here we have a small wall that he cannot pass through. By the way, this art was not created by us, it was created by an artist called Butch. And you can find the complete tile set that we are using here in opengameart.org by searching for a platformer in the forest. Now, the first thing you have to pay attention when you are working with pixel art is to disable the filter when you are importing your arts. If you don't do so, you notice that some of the arts of your game, or all of them, are going to be really blurry. And here you can see this on the rotating items that you have on top. This is due to the fact of our filter that the engine tries to make things look more smooth. And even though this filtering has its uses, especially when you're working with arts that have a really big resolution, for instance, when you're working with games that use vector art, when working with really low resolution pixel art, this is not desired because you actually want to see the pixels and you don't want your art to be really blurry. So to fix that, what you want to do is go back to Godot and select the PNG or whatever format you are using that you just imported into the engine and go to the import tab. And here you want to disable filter and click on reimport. And now if we play the game again, you can see that we don't have that blurriness that we had on our sprites before. We still have some artifacts that we are going to get them in a second, but for now, we fixed our blurriness and we can proceed. Another thing that you have to pay attention when you are importing your arts to your game, especially when you're working with pixel art, is the compress mode. And here you want to select lossless. This way your image is not going to be compressed. And if you forget to remove this, what might happen is that some of your arts might have some weird artifacts in them. For instance, some squares that have different colors than what they used to be in your editing program. So this is something that you also want to pay attention to. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are working with pixel art games is that pixels can't be halved. You can have half of a pixel or one third of a pixel. One pixel is one pixel. And because of that, when you have a game that is using pixel art, because of the movement of our player, he might end up in some position that he is not snapped to our pixel grid. This means that because of the position of our player, we would need a half pixel, but that cannot happen. And if you don't configure your project correctly, you might once again end up with some weird artifacts in your art. For instance, your character might be a little stretched or you might see some moving lines on your art. And to prevent that from happening, what we can do is go to our project settings and under rendering in quality, you want to select use pixel snap under the 2D part. And this is going to make sure that our art and this is only for our art, our character may be in a position where he's not uh, snapped to our pixel grid, but when rendering, the engine is going to make sure that our pixels are going to be snapped to our pixel grid. So this means that we are not going to get any half pixel in our game, which in turn is going to prevent us from having weird artifacts in our art when our game is running. Now I'm going to play our game once again. And if you look closely to our rotating items, you can see that they have all sorts of nasty things around them. And that's once again, thanks to the nature of how pixels work, you cannot rotate a pixel. And when you try to rotate a pixel art image, you might end up with some artifacts like you're seeing now in the screen. For instance, this rock, we are losing some of its outline. And on our sign in and our chest, we can see some pixels jumping out of the image as well. In fact, if you decide to take the really pure route of working with pixel art, you'll never do something like this, which is rotating an image. What you're going to do is actually animate that image rotating and then use this animation. Even though this is the correct approach to go when you are working with pixel precise games, you can actually fix this by going back to our project settings. And under window, we want to change our stretch mode from viewport to 2D. The difference between them is that the 2D mode is going to increase the resolution and render on a bigger resolution than the one that is being specified here on our width and height. And the viewport on the other side is going to keep the same resolution, but just upscale that to fit the whole screen. Now, if I close this and play the game again and increase the size of our game, you can see that we don't get those artifacts anymore. But keep in mind that now what is happening is that we have a game that is running in a bigger resolution than it was supposed to. So this is a trade-off that you have to keep in mind when you are working with pixel art games. Though if you really want to be correct and go down the more purist route, what you want to do is actually, instead of using the 2D, stretch mode, 
you keep it on viewport. This way, your game is always going to be at the correct resolution, even though that the window is bigger. You can see some games that do not use this approach, and to be honest, it's quite common nowadays. Some famous pixel art games that do not use this, and you can see this by just looking at the rotation of their sprites, is Starbound, Terraria, Stardew Valley also does not use this type of approach. So feel free to choose the one that suits better your needs. Just keep in mind that these are the two approaches that you have when working with these games. And lastly, what we're going to see is how to handle collision when you want to have pixel perfect collisions. Now, just by looking at our player, you can see that the collision shape that we have assigned to him is not perfect. And by not being perfect, I mean that it's not covering only the pixels that the player has, it's also covering more. And that is because we're using a rectangle shape. Usually that's not a problem. If you want to, you could also use a polygon shape and, and try to cover only the parts where the sprite is showing. But usually you don't really need that kind of precision. And you can get away with just a rectangle shape or circle shapes in most of your games. Though you still have to pay attention when you are working, especially with a character in a platformer game, that you do not go all the way to the bottom and make your player start to float on top of your platforms. Luckily, Godot has some tools that help us to better read our collisions. So let's open the player scene. And here, if we select our collision shape to D, you can see that the size of our collision shape is exactly 9 by 11. And once again, coming back to the fact that you cannot have, have pixels and whatnot, usually a sign that you have a good collision shape here is that your extents or the size of your collision shape is not a floating point. But having to type your collision size here isn't really optimal because you have to keep playing around with numbers. And to help you play around with your shape, you can always go here to these three dots on our toolbar and select Use Pixel Snap. This way, when you are working with your collision, you can see that we are always snapping to the grid or to the pixel grid, and we're never going to get floating points values here. So this is one thing that you can use. And you could also, of course, use the grid snap by configuring it and activating the grid snap here. Though if you're working with really small pixel art, you can get away using just the pixel snap. Now that is for our player. Though we also have another problem, which is the collision for our map. So I'm going to go back to the game scene. And here on our world, you can see that we have a tile map. And here is where we are defining the collisions for our map. In Godot 3.1, you can select the tile map. And with the tile set already set, you can click on it and click Open Editor. And in this new menu, we're going to be able to configure our tile map. So I'm going to select the one that I created beforehand. And here you can see that we have the collision and each one of these cells here have a collision defined to them. And I did so by using this polygon tool here and also having snap turned on. This way, when we create a collision, if you're working with something that is squared, you can always just click around and let me delete this collision just to showcase this to you. So with both these tools turned on and with the polygon tool selected, I can just click around here. And now we have a perfect collision shape for this tile of our tile set. Now, these are the tools that you can use when working with the pixel art games. Of course, they are not limited to pixel art games, but they help you to create these types of games. Now, keep in mind that this project was created using Godot version 3.1. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video.